Hi everybody, welcome to Saturday Live at the Backyard Bird Center. Today's topic uh, is about feeding mealworms. Get a lot of questions about that and you know why we feed mealworms, what what how to feed mealworms, live versus dry. There's a lot of questions about mealworms, so I thought it would be a good topic today. And the whole time I'm talking, behind me is my backyard. This is a video I shot a couple of years ago of my bluebird box and uh, the mealworm feeder and it has live mealworms in it and the females on it right now so you'll see that going the whole time and the origin of feeding mealworms really comes from just this situation here people started the, the kind of the feeding them to help nesting bluebirds it was a way well of course you get to see them up closer if you if you you know range your your mealworm feeder close to you and that's kind of what got the whole thing started now it has definitely evolved and there are lots more birds that eat uh, mealworms than just bluebirds, but bluebirds were the primary target in the early days, and they think probably are still the primary target with that. So well, the first thing I wanted to address is live versus dried, because dried have become really, really popular. So we have live mealworms and dried mealworms. Now, they, they are both good for birds, but which is better and which is more trouble. So live mealworms are nutritionally much more valuable to the birds than dried ones because the drying process of, uh, of the insects takes away a lot of the nutritional value and the guts inside that are good for the birds. So feeding live mealworms is far better for the birds, and especially in a case like this where mom is feeding, and right now dad's feeding the babies over there, it's much better for him to feed the live mealworms. But live mealworms are a little more of a, a, a challenge and a task, and they're more expensive uh, cost up front. So, but I wanted to show you this, and, and Evan's going to tilt the camera down to show you the difference between uh, the live mealworms versus the dried mealworms. And uh, like I said, if we can focus in, I'm not sure, but if you can see the difference to a bird, the the one, the live ones here on the right are wiggling and squirming and, and kicking around in there. The dried ones, of course, are just just laying there. So if you're a bird that feeds on insects like bluebirds, you see these moving insects, these moving bugs in that dish, and that triggers a food response. That means go down there and get that, that wiggling bug and eat it and feed it to your baby. A bowl of dried mealworms just doesn't trigger that. A bowl of dried mealworms doesn't mean food necessarily. They have to be, you have to train them, and we're going to talk more about that later, but first we're going to talk about the live mealworms. Now, the, the thing that we need to be aware of, if you are going to do live mealworms is that these are not like fishing live red wiggler worms that you're used to putting on a hook and throwing out for them that, that wiggle around and don't have legs. Dried, I mean, live mealworms actually do have legs and what will happen is they will crawl out of a container that is either you know made of wood or real rough surfaces they can crawl out of there and sometimes you'll lose them all before the bluebirds can find them or the, the, the wrens and chickadees and other birds that you're feeding can find them so they need to be in a very slick container it's like this is made of metal this painted so it's very very slick so that the mealworms can't crawl out the side but also glass bowls, Pyrex dishes, you know, slick plastics. Any we have lots of mealworm feeders that are made of different materials that are slick, so they can't crawl out of there, and so that will keep them from from getting away from you. Now, the other part, of course, is that they are live animals, and these will pupate, if you will. These will change into little black beetles that they're allowed to grow and age and eat and, 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 and like their normal lifestyle, they'll pupate and become a black beetle. How do we keep that from happening? Is we keep the containers in the refrigerator. This is how they come, 500 counts in there, and we keep those in the refrigerator, and you should too at home. And that way it kind of keeps these mealworms in a, a state of suspended animation. They're not active. They're not actively eating and they're not growing and so they're ready for you whenever you take them out to feed to your birds. What I like to do and in, in the case here what I usually do is I usually when I take them outside I usually try to shake off they come embedded in um, 
wheat bran or oat bran as bedding, and I like to blow some of that off. But I only used to give my bluebirds about 30, 40 of these mealworms a day. And, and believe me, once you've started doing this and your bluebirds find these worms, they are not going to last very long. They are going to eat them all and they're going to feed them to their babies. There's one point in the video I know a chickadee comes up and the chickadee wants to try to eat on them and the bluebirds run the chickadee off and because they, other birds will eat them too. Like I say, Carolina wrens, house wrens, even bigger birds like robins and catbirds and Baltimore Orioles this year have been really on the, the mealworms. Uh, Dennis is, in particular has been feeding a lot of mealworms to his uh, baby Orioles that have been coming around the last week or two. So, but they are alive, and they will die if we don't take care of them. And what do you have to do? Well, in my case, I don't have to do much very often because they go through them so fast. They'll eat them before I have to do anything. But if you're stingy with them and you only want to feed 10 or 12 a day and you want to try to make them last for a long time, then you can keep these in the refrigerator up to about two weeks. And then what you need to do is you need to dump what you have left in your container out into a feeder like this or a, a steel pie pan, something like that, and then slice an apple or a potato into thin slices and lay them on top of the, the live mealworms. And they will eat on the, those apples. They'll get their moisture from there. They'll get their food from there. And then once they, they've munched for a good while, you can put them back into your container, back in your refrigerator for another two weeks. Like I said, just depends on how many you're feeding uh, and how you know, stingy you are about putting them out. Most of the time, you're going through them in two weeks. You know, that, and that's you know, you don't have to worry about the apple thing, but that you need to be aware that that's something you should do if you're going to keep them longer than that. Now, live mealworms, again, you know, I want to how to present them. You know, I, what I did with mine is I put my pole about 20 feet from my bluebird box. I don't like having my mealworm feeder too close to my box because that attracts those other birds. And the closer you've got a lot of bird activity to your bluebird box, the more disturbing that is, especially to the male, because his instincts are to run things off from away from his box. So I don't like to put my, my mealworm feeder too close to my box. But a great thing about doing this, especially I've got it just on a hummingbird feeder pole, it's very light, I can move it. And what I could do is I could take that pole and after about a, you know, two or three days of feeding it there, I can move it about 10 feet closer or 20 feet closer to my deck and then another few days to make it, and then I can eventually hang it off my deck and I have my bluebirds eating those mealworms right up on my deck. They'll follow those live mealworms. So that you can do that and you can get them to come a lot closer to you. So. Live mealworms, great for the babies, great to feed during the nesting season. Yes, they're a little more expensive. So what about the dried mealworms? Okay, the dried mealworms. Like I said, less nutritional value, but far cheaper. I mean, this big bag of these is about the same cost as this little container of the live ones. So how do you get the birds to eat these? We showed you in the beginning these Dried mealworms are not don't look very appetizing to the to a bird. They don't know what they are. Well, one of the oldest tricks in the book is to take some olive oil or some cooking oil and put a dribble or two in there and stir them up, and so they get a good glisten to them. They're, they're, they look shiny. And whenever the clouds are moving and the sun's filtering through and they hit the the uh, the oil on these mealworms, then it looks like they're moving. It does give an illusion that they are moving. So that is a trick that you can try to get them to to eat the, the dried mealworms. What most people do, though, is they, especially with bluebirds, is they start with the live ones. Get those bluebirds used to coming to those live ones. Then start adding in dried ones. So if, like maybe you know, a third of them or, or a quarter of them be dried and the rest of them be live. And then slowly switch those uh, mealworms over and train those bluebirds to eat those dried mealworms. Now, Dried mealworms require more water for the birds to be able to digest them. So make sure you have a source of water for them. Because we always talk about how important water is. But you need to have bird baths and things so the birds have, um, they, especially the adults and the young birds, have a place to go and drink some water whenever they're eating the dried mealworms. For the most part, dried mealworms are used, I use them in, mainly in the fall and winter months. 
and I mix them in with my boardwalk blend and my open tray feeder. And when my bluebirds are coming into my medium sunflower chips, which is their favorite food at my house, especially in the winter, I have a tray on my on my tube feeder, and they I, I sprinkle extra. Uh, medium chips in that tray and I mix in the blue the meal dried mealworms in there and they find those too so I find that I'm the dried mealworms to me are more of my winter thing that I do my fall and winter mixed in with my bird seed whereas the live ones are whenever it's the nesting season and they're feeding babies that I find that to be a, a successful uh, you know setup for me and hopefully it'll work for you too so it's a great idea for a program. Thanks so much. Uh, if you have ideas for future programs, please send them in. If you're on YouTube, please give them a like, give them a share. He's pointing to me because he knows that I didn't talk about the keeping the big birds out of the feeders. Yes, big birds, you can have robins take over or orioles take over your feeder. There are ways to keep the bigger birds out of your mealworms. And this is one of them. You can see at the end, there's a hole there, like a bluebird box. But in here, there's plexiglass. And you can put the mealworms inside the feeder. And you kind of have to train those birds. That, you know, Chickadees and uh, Carolina Wren seem to figure it out pretty quickly. Bluebirds are a little slower on the uptake. So, But uh, the training them to go in there so that the starlings and the robins and, and the bigger birds can't get in there and get to them. So there are ways to keep bigger birds. Out, especially out of your live mealworms because we know they're more expensive. So that's why that was sitting there and my producer reminded me. So I think that was a good call. All right. So again, you're on YouTube. Please subscribe. Ring the bell so you can get notifications. Please give the, the uh, videos a like. Give them a share. Come by and then they'll help birds.